Airports can sometimes be a bit of a nightmare. From crowded check-in gates to delayed flights to lost luggage, they can be the most troublesome part of air travel. However, there are some ways airport design can be used to circumnavigate some of the difficulties us passengers face at airports. Using good design elements and thoughtful engineering can vastly improve airport efficiency and passenger experiences. An effective terminal layout that matches the airport's needs may significantly cut down on wait times, walk times, and improve passenger experiences. Even though there are many fairly interesting terminal layouts, there are three designs that are most frequently used in modern airports. A linear design, a finger design, and an island design. In the linear design, the aircrafts are parked parallel to the terminal, which can be straight or curved. This design can be seen in airports all across the world, including in Osaka, Japan, Sabiya Gökçen in Istanbul, and Kansas City, Missouri. This layout works particularly well for airports that are the final destinations and not transfer hubs, as the design does not work well for larger airports. The International Air Transport Association, or the IATA, recommends that passengers walk unaided for a maximum of 300 meters, and that anything above this distance should include a walkway or a people mover. The long and skinny dimensions of the terminal could mean that passengers have to walk long distances if the airport is too large, which can become a nightmare for connecting passengers. Due to the IATA recommendation, airports with linear designs are likely to duplicate terminals and connect them with a people mover system which is seen in Dallas Fort Worth. Dallas has five sets of duplicated terminals, each with their own check-in gates, security checkpoints, baggage claims, and Starbuckses. Having five sets of the same services can increase costs for the airports, the airlines, and ultimately the passengers. Due to the duplication of terminals, Dallas is known for poor connecting services. The interior walking distance from dallas Fort Worth International Airport's gate D6 to A8 is a whopping 1.45 miles. Then comes the pier finger design. This design incorporates piers that are perpendicular to the main building in which the planes park along. It is seen across the world in airports such as Reagan National Airport in DC, Amsterdam Schiphol, and LAX. This design tends to work best for airports that have multiple airlines and air alliances serving the same airport. For example, in Los Angeles, Southwest, Delta, United, American, and Alaskan Airlines all have a base of operations. With the pier design, each can have their own designated area to handle their own passengers and offer short connecting times within the pier. If connecting between piers is a must, then walking distances can get long, such as in Istanbul's new airport. Connecting passengers have complained that the walking distance is too much across the five piers of the airport. The third design is the island design. This design usually incorporates islands that are parallel to the main terminal and are connected with a people mover system. Some examples include Washington Dulles, Atlanta Hartsfield, and Dubai International. These terminals are usually found in very large airports that have plenty of traffic flowing through them. With well-designed people mover systems, these airports can be very effective at connecting people to terminals they want to go to, like in Atlanta's Hartsfield. These island terminals are also used as expansion products if the main terminal's demand exceeds its capacity. When designing a terminal, forward thinking is a must. If the demand for air travel is expected to exceed the airport's capacity in the future, the airport must be planned to keep future expansions in mind. Istanbul Airport, Beijing Daxing, Hong Kong Cheplak Kok have all planned expansions that are ready to begin construction to meet future demand. Most modern airports incorporate many of these design choices. Some of the world's largest airports combine two, if not three, of these design elements. Hong Kong, Singapore, Paris Charles de Gaulle, JFK, and Heathrow all use a combination of these designs. Using a combination of these configurations, airports can create unique designs that cater to different airlines and passenger needs by giving them a little bit of everything. For example, Seoul International has all three of the design elements and has been built in phases to help cope with the increasing passenger demand. Another new design trend among the newest airports being built across the globe is using local design elements to convey an identity. The Jewel in Singapore is a perfect example of this with a total gross floor area of 135 square meters. This terminal extension with an indoor rainforest represents the area's biodiversity while also introducing the modern architecture of Singapore. It gives the airport an identity that is reminiscent of the region. 
Likewise, the new Istanbul airport has a glass dome ceiling that draws from the ancient architectural character of Istanbul, similar to the dome seen in the Grand Bazaar, one of the oldest covered shopping markets in the world. So which design is best? The answer is, it depends. There's no single solution and there are several factors that need to be considered including the size, the type of traffic expected, and the needs of the airlines. When making a decision we need to evaluate several factors including walking distances, traffic patterns, aircraft taxiing, passenger flow, processing time, and the level of service. By making forward-thinking decisions that incorporate the identity and architecture of the area, efficient terminals can create unique passenger experiences like no other, while also moving customers through terminals efficiently.